What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today we're talking about pretty big news story that's being dropped by Bloomberg and obviously Peter Schreier. Now, the key thing that I really want to talk about is obviously all this news about a Microsoft, the you know the conglomerate, is cutting around 10,000 jobs um, from all of its divisions, as well as other tech companies like Amazon. They're trying to cut costs because of this possible resurgence of a recession in the atmosphere right now. And it seems like this is obviously impacting a lot of industries. And we honestly don't know a lot of things that's going to do in the future of these different tech companies. But it seems as though there's going to be a lot of discussion about what this might mean for games, as well as, you know, gaming franchises like Halo Infinite and Starfield, because it seems like according to this report, there's going to be some changes happening at these different companies. So in this video, I do want to talk about what is the background of the story and as well as tackling some different rumors that are being discussed and then discuss what I think will be the impact, long lasting impact on these different franchises based on what we know so far. The key thing that we have to understand, everyone, is that this is just a brand new story being dropped and we have to find out a lot of new information before we jump the gun on anything. I think right now, when I'm looking at the story itself, obviously the fact that you have Microsoft being, uh, you know, cutting a lot of jobs and it seems as if for the past few years, they've been going in this route, trying to save as much money as possible. According to the report, it seems as if they're trying to, a lot of the jobs being cut are actually from their engineering department and trying to focus more on AIs doing a lot of the jobs that these engineers were doing, especially when it comes to their services, like um, you know their, their Windows services that they do on a daily basis. Now, according to these reports, it seems that part of this, this these cuts are also going to be in the gaming division, and some jobs being lost will be from 3 for 3 Industries as well as Bethesda Studios. And obviously, this is going to be really important because uh, at the end of the day, I think the key feature of this is as a gaming channel, we're focusing on the gaming aspect of it. Now, is this brand new to anybody? I think a lot of people saw this coming and Microsoft, for example, was doing a lot of cuts for the past few months. And their plan was to do this at this point in time. Because of this new resurgence of a recession possibly heading, it causes a lot of people to kind of wonder, you know, how are they going to cut the corners and make sure that they still have these high levels of production and still in place? And that's going to be the question that we have to kind of analyze and see now when it comes to the rumors i do want to address some key rumors i've heard about this recently and i think this is going to be a really important part of the video first off the biggest rumor that a lot of people were discussing from this news was is halo franchise dead or going to be put to put to death or put to sleep essentially i don't think that's going to happen i think the key thing is this when you're looking at a lot of the reports based on this information there were roughly around 60 people being cut from 343 industries and granted if this was a you know multi-thousand corporation then i'd say yes yeah, 60 is not necessarily the biggest number out there but if we're talking about a company that's sitting around like 500 or 400 people yeah you know what that, that could be a chunk of the department that they have working with them and i think obviously will has some setbacks on the industry itself especially when it comes to how halo is functioning Right now, they are struggling with content when it comes to, you know, this game and how much they're missing compared to what they normally have. Not confirmed reports, but it seems like a lot of people were discussing that this seems like it's a either a certain campaign members are being cut. And obviously, Joseph Staten being one of those people being repurposed, not into, not to be in 3 for 3 Industries anymore, to be more based on the, uh, the Xbox publishing group, which is essentially a group that kind of oversees all the different studios that they have. But... I think that obviously that's kind of the biggest hit that a lot of people are looking at because of the obviously Joseph Staten being such a pivotal character in Halo in general, like the Halo franchise, being a key writer on the earlier Halo games and obviously being a, a, a key person that really got this game going in 2020 when he was first hired to at least make this game launch somewhat successfully, obviously, when it came to just let just landing right on its feet for the most part. The key thing that I'm trying to think about with this, this story is, do I think that Halo is dead or the franchise is going to be put down to sleep? I don't think so. I think the key thing here is that this was almost like a plan that Microsoft had in the long run. Like, this is not just something that they just sent to people out of the blue and said, hey, you're fired. Now pack your stuff up and leave. You don't give Joseph Staten, Staten a, you know, Xbox publishing job out of the blue you don't just tell them hey you're just being transferred run random day it seems like they were in the process of doing this for a while especially with the leaving of certain positions like key positions like with you know bonnie ross being kind of allowed to step away that the key thing that this rumor can get squashed in a way is if three for three or microsoft comes out and says this is the plan going forward this is the roadmap this is what we think is going to be the best thing going forward and that will be so somewhat of a way to squash a lot of these rumors but 
To say that Halo is going to be dead because of this, I, I don't really see that being the case. As much as people want to make the case that, you know, Starfield is going to be Xbox's next flagship title for the future, sure, you can make the case, but Halo is still one of the most popular titles that Microsoft has. And to say that it's going to just die or, or be put on a 10-year hiatus, Microsoft needs all the games they can get right now. Like, they need all the IPs that they can land at this point, and you're going to cut away one of the biggest IPs for for this reason alone. It, even if it's not for 3 for 3, that's going to take on Halo. They're going to give the company another, a different company Halo to, to run. I, I don't think they'll just say, yep, it's it's dead or it's going to sleep or anything like that. Now, the other one is about Starfield. A lot of people have uh, been kind of storming the Twitterverse and saying, well, this is almost confirmed that Starfield's being delayed even further. Like, I, I don't think that's the case either. Like, Starfield at this point was essentially nearly complete. I mean, the only thing that we're waiting for is for them to go gold. Like, the code word for you're putting them into discs and they're going out right because remember it was a, supposed to release around november and then they delayed it right to say in the first quarter of 2023 which is roughly all the way till around april may i think around april i think is the latest date and that means that that's only a few months away right i don't think this was a like i said before a whim they just threw this out there and said all right all these people are cut i think they have this in mind and that's part of the reason why they're trying to at least get things settled to at least push things out. And But this is a pretty large company, so it's not like everyone is only on Starfield. I think there's, there's a wide array of groups of people that unfortunately lost their jobs in this in this, uh, in this this cut. But based on what Microsoft is saying, as well as you know what others in, uh, in 343 and other places, they're stating that they're trying to restructure positions to at least maybe manage the same workload, but have it more. And this is what the, the head of Microsoft had said. They're trying to manage the workload and be more, I guess you say, efficient, right? Based on what they're what what it says in this article. What does this mean for gaming? What does this mean specifically? I'll start with Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is obviously we all know has struggled right out the gate, right? They they had difficulty landing with content and things that were essential to Halo uh, for for most fans, right? You're thinking about what they didn't have at launch, and there's more you could say about what they didn't have versus what they did have, right? And that was something that was a you know, you have to give 3 for 3 a lot of kind of concern over how they are leading this ship going forward. And the key thing I'm looking at with 3 for 3 is that obviously the way this game started, it was bad, but it's gotten better since because of the fact that it's like almost like it needed another year to at least get its footing, which is kind of sad. To say that it's automatically dead, I don't think that's going to be the case. The impact that this could have on Halo Infinite could be a multitude of different things, right? I, I see a few options or pathways that Halo has going forward due to these cuts. Well, I know that Joseph State is not going to be, you know, on deck with Halo Infinite anymore, so it could mean a few things. One, it could mean that they might be repurposing positions within the company. People who might be working on multiplayer facets might be jumping more into campaign facets. What this also can mean is that if they're focusing more on the live service and the multiplayer, that Halo Infinite might not be getting any DLC content. It might not be really focusing on a story for the rest of this game. They, the next DLC might just be the next installment of Halo, right? They Because the point is that if they already have the writing done, but obviously they're having issues trying to get the, uh, get the trademark on the Endless, right? It means that they already have the story written and it's already being started and worked on. I don't think they're just going to throw that out and say, well, you know, bad luck in the next 10 years. I think they're going to just say, all right, well, we have the, everything written. We have everything going. It's now just about repurposing people to work for that. It, obviously, the option of, of keeping everyone here and getting everything done efficiently is a great idea, but obviously losing people for three for three is obviously going to be difficult, right? The other option, and I think this one might be more likely to happen, is the combination of three for three being added to or working alongside another company to get more things out for Halo Infinite or just Halo franchise in general. I think more likely at this point, it seems like a company like Certain Affinity, who's already been working on this Battle Royale mode, for Halo Infinite, that they might be now, you know, working more just not just on the battle royale, but maybe on the multiplayer and even the campaign aspects. Right at the end of the day, you really think about it. Certain affinities, the 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 head of Certain Affinity used to be a key designer for the multiplayer for Halo 2. So you have a lot of people that are close to the franchise in Certain Affinity as well as three three for three industries. And now you're if you're trying to have the both of them work on in Halo Infinite going forward or the Halo franchise going forward, I don't necessarily think that is a bad thing. You might be saying to yourself, well, that, that just sounds like hopium. I think it's just being realistic. I think we right now the, the key thing is that you have to be calm in how you react to this. I think people that are jumping the gun calling this the end all be all, the 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 world ender, the the way the way the world ends, the world's burning, all this stuff. 
I think we have to come and we have to see, right? Based off this article alone, it doesn't mean that Halo franchise is dead. It doesn't mean that Halo is not going to put out any more content for multiplayer or even story. It just means that there were cuts that happened. Microsoft cut people 10,000 jobs, which is horrible within, within itself. And you really hope that all those people you land on their feet. I just think that this doesn't necessarily mean the end all for all these different industries. Yeah, it's going to have some impacts, but I don't think it's going to be the end, right? I think that's where people kind of go over the top with some of this stuff. Now, granted, yeah, you know what? If hey, Xbox if Microsoft comes out and says, you know what? We're going to put a hold on the development of the next Halo franchise for some time. Yeah, no, and when that happens, then I will completely say, all right, they're, they're going to do a reset, try to have a different company work on the next Halo IP and maybe do a reboot of some kind, right? That will be the time when I say that. But just to make that jump, to make that accusation, that 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 random comment, that that's what's going to happen here based on this one report, I don't think that's the case. Right? I don't see Microsoft investing all this money into the gaming division for them to only kneecap major gaming developers like Bethesda, who is making their next flagship title, or 3 for 3 Industries that is supposedly working on their old flagship title, right? I don't really see that being the case. Microsoft, yeah, makes dumb decisions at times for sure. But to tell me that they're just straight up canceling two major games or they're delaying a major game in Starfield and canceling their next most popular game in Halo, like really? You really think that's going to happen here? Sure, you can make the case that maybe 3 for 3 shouldn't be the group going forward with Halo. Sure, I mean, I wouldn't be completely against that concept if that were the case. Do I think that's the guarantee what's going to happen? No. We don't know much about the long term effects of this because it was just announced. And the article itself is not even as in depth as you would think, but we don't know for sure until the day comes that Microsoft or three for three or Bethesda comes out and says, this is what's going to happen next. Then we don't know. Right? So the key thing is calm the waters. We don't have no idea what's going to happen next. The key thing is just try to at least look at what the facts are and make assumptions based on those facts until, until you get the information. I think we have to just wait and see, right? That's kind of the goal here. Not saying that, yeah, don't think about it. I'm not saying just look blindly and just enjoy yourself. No, right? You can be critical of all these different groups for making different decisions. You can have your own ideas about what you think would be the best thing going forward. That's fine. But at the end of the day, we have to be realistic. We have to look at the situation, look at what the IPs we're talking about, and do you really think that they're going to drop Halo like that fast? I really don't think so. We just need to hope that this does not have drastic impacts for the negative going forward. We have to see what happens. But... Obviously, it I want you guys to tell me what you think, and I want you to drop that in the comments below. Obviously, you can catch me on Twitch. I do live streams daily. We play a lot of different games out there, all different platforms, so please drop on, and I'd love to see you there. You can also follow me on Twitter and Discord, and that is also located in the description below. Until next time, guys, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>